<clears throat> Good morning and welcome to Interfaith Spiritual Center Worldwide. Where we have no creed but love. Love one another as I have loved you. And we have no doctrine but the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Our theme for the month, as our Reverend Prince Fleet shared with you, is the art of blessing. And as my text, I've used the gentle art of blessing by Pierre Pradevang from Geneva, Switzerland. It is the most magnificent book. And one of the chapters, of course, is on the golden rule. Jesus said it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And as Jesus, as his humanity gave way to the divinity, the Christ consciousness arose triumphant and victorious. And he said, the works that I do, ye shall do also an even greater work ye shall do than I do. Not setting himself up as the great exception, but the great example to empower humanity with their own Christ consciousness. Buddha taught the heart of compassion. He said that humanity is the result of all that they have thought. And it, the great I am presence. I am that I am. And be very clear that when you use I am, what you put after it creates your reality. That's right. So when we say I am happy, healthy, prosperous, and free, that sends out a message to the universe. And if we are going through challenges, if we have sorrow within us, then we acknowledge that and open to the healing power of the universe, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over into every single area of our lives. And one of the things that uh, Pierre Pradovan was sharing is that he was taking a dear friend, a leader from Africa, to the Geneva train station. And he said that uh, he noticed this man, he had like a very blank stare in his eyes, and he seemed very listless, and he felt that, you know, he was probably drugged in some way. And he had noticed him a few weeks before. And as they were walking to the train station and he with his friend ready to board to uh, return to Africa, this man punched Pierre in the mouth and nose and he actually fell down. He said there was blood everywhere because we know anything from the face, it just bleeds profusely. And at that moment, he went into a blessing and blessed this dear man with the desolation in his face and striking out to humanity, striking out because there was something within him that did not feel empowered, did not feel the love of the universe, that was looking in the outer world. And so as he did this, he said, his friend was more distraught than he was. His name was Demba. And he said, within two minutes, the bleeding subsided and the swelling began to go down as he went into this blessing of the man that struck out against him and really hurt him. And he said, by the time he got home that his wife, Ellie, didn't notice anything on his face, that he just kept blessing him, sending him light, sending him love, knowing that wherever pain seems to be operating, the presence of God is. Wherever upset seems to be operating, the presence of God is. Wherever dis-ease seems to be operating, the presence of God is. And kept sending out the presence of God and sending out this love. And he said, of course, you know, he wondered how he could have attracted this. And uh, I have been to Finhorn. Uh, in fact, it was founded in the 60s uh, by uh, Emily and Peter Cady and, uh, and Miss McLean. And he said when he got there to Finhorn, which is in Scotland, it's in the highlands of Scotland, and it is a community where everyone that has uh, moved into Finhorn, they're all part of the Finhorn spiritual 
community. They have chapel three times a day and they eat together and they play together and they pray together. And it was one of the really first uh, deeply spiritual communities. And he said, he asked uh, Emily Cady, you know, he first, you know, shared what happened. And she just came out and said, stop beating yourself up and punching yourself in the face. And he said, you know, I went within and I thought about all the times I have berated myself and that even have the outer world strike out of me to, I drew that in so I could take a look at it. And what I know is that we are created in the image and likeness of God, whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on our higher power, it matters not. But to acknowledge that which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world of conditions, appearances, and effects. And these conditions show up. We give our power away to it, right? Uh, you know, I've had a couple of people talk about that they feel that they have been marginalized because of being at that state of elderhood. I do not experience that. I'm very happy to share that on the 77 years I've been on the planet, that my life is full. I am so grateful that I have a purpose higher than myself as my humanness gives way to the divine, whatever my objective experience is, whatever I'm dis-ease I may have gone through or whatever surgery I may have gone through in this 46 years of sacred service in the ministry, it has given way to the energy of my purpose which is to inspire, teach, and heal, to share and expand the experience of God's love through all creation. And so, and Fleet and I have discussed this, that no matter what we have gone through, that when our higher purpose calls us, everything else falls to the wayside and we arise in this energy of service. To love what you do and do what you love is the greatest combination in life that we have, and I am so deeply grateful for my life purpose, and that I take my ordination vows very, very seriously, and my sacred commitments. To me, it's all part of the energy of why I'm here on the planet. And being raised in domestic violence, that too was part of my learning, my growth period, and reaching down within my heart and soul to feel compassion for the ones that were abusive. And when my sister took her own life, you know, I just sent out the love and the blessing and in our way of life, we do not judge how anyone leaves the planet. We send out love, compassion, and understanding. So when we look at do unto others as you would have them do unto you, for me, it's been a blessing because every time I have felt that I have wanted to react outside of myself, I just breathe in that energy. And as I breathe in this energy, I know that I am the greatest benefactor. Carolyn Mace, who is a very acclaimed author on the planet, wrote Sacred Contracts and some just beautiful books on archetypes. And uh, she is a medical intuitive. She said that she was in Africa and they were on a, like a, a spiritual safari and she was enjoying all of the animals and the energy of Africa. And after the wonderful seminar and coming together, breaking bread together, really acknowledging the sacred, the sacrament of this holy time together, uh, one of the party said that he was now going on a real safari and he wanted to kill a lion. And she said that she felt this energy within her stir up. And she said, just remain calm, allow everyone their choices. And she said, it just got, it got so intense. And she could feel the blood rising in, in her, the redness in her ears. And she just wanted to let it go. But she turned to him and said, so you're a murderer? And he said, well, I never viewed it 
that way. She said, why would you want to kill a living thing on the planet that graces our lives with a sense of awe and intrigue and beauty? Why would you want to do that? And she said, you know, it came out, she shared it, but it also gave him another view. So if we do unto others as we want them to do unto us, doesn't it include the planet? The planet that we live on, the planet that is there to nurture us and give us life, can't we give back to it? And knowing what's going on on the planet and all of the grassroots amazing organizations that want to recreate the experience of what's going on on the planet. So when Pierre Pradovan said that we, he was so bitter for months on end from being really fired from a job that he loved, that he was uh, donated $25,000 to the third world countries and to feed those that were hungry in third world countries, and that this one man had it in for him and wanted him gone and created a scenario where he said he would have to compromise his moral position in life or resign. And he said he resigned and carried that bitterness around with him for months. He meditated, he prayed, he did the mantras, he, you know, went within and nothing was working. And then he was reading the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave. And it said, bless those that curse you and say all manner of evil against you for his name's sake. Bless those that curse you. And he said he had a revelation that as we bless those that curse us, as we bless those that are unkind to us, and you know that last Saturday was World Kindness Day, that every November 13th, the World Kindness Movement created World Kindness Day where they focus on random acts of kindness rather than senseless acts of violence. And a day where we can just join together in that energy. And when I received my World Kindness Award from the Global Society of Female Entrepreneurs in Newport Beach, you know, I was so very, very deeply moved because everyone in the room was so amazing and founding nonprofits. And then the president of the society, Robbie Motter, asked if I would say a few words. And so I just started out with, if you have the choice between being right or being kind, choose kindness and you will always be right. So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And when the universe gives you that punch, and I've always said, whenever I felt the rug pulled out from under me, I have always landed on higher ground, always. And the universe sends its message. And sometimes it's a punch in the face. Sometimes it's a gentle nudge. Sometimes it's a whisper. God speaks in whispers. And the world is very, very loud. So on this day, as we acknowledge this golden rule and the opportunity that we have to make a difference. There was a young man, he was a very yuppie issue, walking down New York uh, City streets, you know, feeling really good about himself. And he saw this man sort of leaning against a scaffold. And he, he could see that he was, you know, very disheveled and he had smelled of alcohol. And there's something that he uh, created in a spiritual community where he said he really wanted to go to the next level in his spirituality. And he really wanted to know what is the secret of life? And so he saw this disheveled guy and he's leaning against the scaffold and he just went over to him and said, is there anything I can do for you? And the man shared that he was once very successful. He had a thousand employees. Now he was on the street, you know, he had lost everything. And this young yuppie man said, you're breathing. 
you didn't lose your life. You're here for a reason. You have a destiny to fulfill. And at that, the man broke into tears and said, you are my savior because I was going to climb up this scaffold. I was going to jump and end my life. And you came. And I am so grateful. And the young man said, Ah, you have given me as much as you feel that I have given you. My eyes are open. My heart feels the energy of this moment. You have given me as much as I have given you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Leave our comfort zones for that moment to extend a hand of friendship. And as we let go and let God do what God does best by means of each and every one of us, we know that it is what? When God does what God does best by means of each and every one of us, it's to extend love. The strongest power in the universe. I am about tipping the scales in favor of world peace and love. And when we have the slings and arrows pointed at us to bless them that curse you and say all manner of evil against you for his name's sake. And that namesake is within us and it lives and moves and has its being at the center of our one life. And I'm so grateful to be with you this morning. I'm so grateful to feel your energy. Uh, I've had a very interesting week, and I bless those of you who have private messaged me and sent me cards and all of that. Uh, I'm very grateful. But I don't ever uh, make a public display of what I go through on Facebook because I feel that if you have a powerful group praying for you, and we have an amazing miracle working ministry of prayer. They see us in our wholeness, where many people go right into the dis-ease that they may see, and they focus on that. In our way of life, in metaphysics, we see each other in our wholeness, our completeness, and our perfection. That's the energy I want directed toward me. Not that, oh, I hope you're healed. I am healed. I am whole perfect and complete. That which needs to be healed is healed. That which needs to be revealed is revealed. That which needs to be known is known. And that which needs to be released is released quickly, gently, and with grace. So as I go through my own physical challenge, knowing that as my humanness gives way to the divine and that clarity is power. And once we know what's going on within our physical anatomy, this body temple, then we can deal with it. I bless medical science. I bless my natural paths. I bless all those that are in prayer. I bless the energy of the universe that flows through each and every one of us as this amazing light that penetrates the darkness and not only penetrates the darkness, it absorbs it. It not only absorbs it, it what? Illuminates it. And there is only the light and shadows flee away forever and ever and ever. So on this day, we do unto others at the very deepest level as we would have them do unto us. This is a sacred, sacred agreement. It is a sacrament of the Holy Spirit that lives and moves and has its being within each and every one of us, that we are whole, perfect, and complete. And whatever is going on in the objective world it gets our attention. And as Dr. Ernest Holmes stated in the Science of Mind textbook, that these are facts and the facts show up, but they are not spiritual realities. The spiritual reality is within us and lives and moves and has its being at the center of our one glorious, passionate and amazing lives. So, what I want you to know is that we are all on our path and that as we feel this energy expand within us, that we have that opportunity to what? 
go higher yet. Where? Higher yet. yet. Where? Higher yet. yet. For we are in a high place and we will not come down. None of these outer things move us. We are in a high place and we will not come down. So I say to you, namaste. The divinity within me salutes the divinity within you and the divinity within you salutes the divinity within me. And if I am in that place in me and you are in that place in you, there is only one of us. Namaste and shalom, the peace that passes all understanding. And God bless us every single one. And it's been my joy to be with you this morning. Uh, this is Thanksgiving week. I will uh, be sharing on Wednesday Night Live Thanksgiving Eve about the gentle art of blessing and the opportunity we have to expand our good in amazing ways. So just know that I am grateful for you, our virtual community. I love you. And yes, we are going higher yet. And so it is.